Hey guys, welcome to this video. I hope all of you are doing good. Now the topic of today's video is uh, about uh, something I don't know if you have heard of it or not called term sheets. Uh, so whenever an investor agrees to invest in your startup, you usually sign an agreement with him or a term sheet with him. Now what exactly the term sheet is we are going to cover in this video. Now whenever an investor has agreed to invest, so you went to an investor and he has agreed that okay he finds your startup good, he, now he will do his own due diligence. Due diligence means that he will see whether your financials are what you told him, he will see your balance sheets, he will see your technology, he will see how you, your processes work. So when he agrees to when he does the due, uh, does the due diligence, usually it's, it can take up to 6 months also. So when an investor agreed to invest in the company to when he actually puts the money in your bank account, it can take 6 months. So during this 6 months, you sign two important documents with him. The first one that you sign is term sheet, which is signed usually at the beginning of when he has agreed to invest in your company. The term sheet contains all the terms that you need to agree with the investor before proceeding. Okay, And then when he is finally about to invest, then you sign the agreement. Agreement is the legal piece which contains more detailed terms, more detailed legalities which are there plus it contains all the terms of the term sheet also. So term sheets and agreements are very important part. Term sheet is specifically uh, crucial because that essentially fixes up all the terms that you need to negotiate with the investor and you need to uh, be comfortable with the investors. All the terms that you both are comfortable with. So in this video, uh, we are going to look at a legit term sheet that I have used for my companies in which I have invested plus in which uh, for my own companies also for raising investment. So we are going to look at that term sheet and we'll see each and every point of how what does it mean and how, de how can you convince uh, the investor to agree to that point and which points are important for the investor and the entrepreneur both. You might have heard about terms like anti-dilution, right of first refusal, preemptive rights, non-compete agreement. Uh, confidentiality clause. So usually these agreements they can be like 50 pages also. Term sheets are usually smaller uh, in size. Uh, they can be, uh, they can range from 3 to 10 pages and they essentially contains all the terms that you have agreed. So what term sheet does is that once you sign the term sheet though it is not legal, uh, if he has signed the term sheet does not mean that he will uh, do the agreement but it gives both the entrepreneur and the investor the confidence that okay we have agreed on these terms and now no matter what these terms will be fixed now whatever the thing is that will those will be other things apart from this so these are fixed now you can proceed fast towards the execution of the agreement and the final investment right so uh, I'll take you guys straight away now into the term sheet and we will discuss each and every point which is there in the term sheet. So let's begin. So as you see here, I hope, let me just zoom it a bit and put it, yeah, I think this is the perfect, yeah. So this is what a term sheet looks like. Just let me first roll you the entire term sheet. This is what the entire term sheet looks like. You don't need to read it, but I'm just rolling it so that you know. So all these uh, 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 all these points in bold which you see on the left side here, these are all the terms. These are all the heading of the terms and this is the detail of the terms which you will be agreeing on with the investor. Okay. So we will begin right from the starting and we'll go to go through each of this because this is a term sheet i'll put the link also to download this uh, term sheet and you can use this term sheet for actually any uh, investor that you are uh, in touch with that you are trying to bring in uh, to invest in your company this is a very exhaustive term sheet this contains all the points which are advantageous to the entrepreneur also and to the investor also so you can use this uh, format for your uh, funding rounds also. I'll also put a link to uh, probably the agreement also because agreement is more detailed but I will suggest you that agreement you get it executed by a proper legal person because it's worth that he vets it and he does all the things properly while term sheet is something that you can yourself just draft it on a letterhead or your piece of paper and get it signed between you and the investor that's it. Okay. So the first point in the term sheet uh, again, uh, on, in this paragraph there are details like which company uh, is this term sheet referring to, ABC Technologies Private Limited and that's it. We will straight away come to the details. So number one is business. So this details the business of the company, like what does the company do, 
The company is engaged in the business of providing web technology services which includes development of software for businesses and enterprises. A brief, very brief description of what your company does. Number two is about the promoters of the company. Who is the promoter of the company? The company is currently controlled by Rajat Yadav and Shubham Jindal. Okay. The current capital structure of the company, this specifies how many shares are in, their, in the company, what is the equity that the promoters, the directors hold in the company, this specifies this. Right? So see, 10,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and the promoters hold 100% equity. If you want to learn about equity and shares, I have made a separate video on it. Uh, I think the name is company structure or you will find it if you search it. So this is what capital structure is. Instruments. Uh, the meaning of instruments is that whenever an investor invests in your company, he is given instruments and these instruments are shares, right? Instruments means anything which uh, accomplishes something. So, this is, these are shares. So, see, here it is written, 125 equity shares will be allotted to Rajat Yadav, who is the investor for an investment amount of 5 lakhs. So, when Rajat gives 5 lakh to my company, he will get 125 percent, he will get 125 equity shares in the company. This is what it tells. Valuation of the company. So, for the purpose of this transaction, the pre-money valuation is 4 crores. Very simple, pre, uh, this is a simple point. So, these points are uh, basically self-explanatory. I am not uh, focusing much on that. Important points which will come uh, uh, ahead, uh, I will be, I'll be focusing much more on uh, them. Uh, next is proposed transaction. So, this is a summary of this, this proposed transaction that the investor proposes to make an investment of 5 lakhs. Okay, nothing uh, out of the box in this also. Then comes the next point which is board composition and incidental matters. Now, board composition means, now what is a board in a company? A board is any, a board is a group of people who takes decisions in a company, usually called board of directors. So, any decision when it is stuck, it's the decision of the board of directors to go to govern that. Now, if the investor is not in the board of directors, that means that investor cannot influence any decision. Founders can take it. But usually what investors want is that they want an equal uh, right in the board of directors so that they want an equal voting right so that when any decision is stuck, 50% is their uh, choice of whether to uh, pass it or not and 50% is the founder's choice. So here also, uh, invest, this is an investor friendly term. So, what this company has done is investors shall be entitled to nominate one investor director and the other director shall be nominated by the promoters. So, what the founders have agreed is that to make it easier for the investor, more comfortable for the investor, we have agreed that the investor, whoever is investing, he can nominate one investor director to sit on the board from his behalf. Now, it can be the investor himself or any other person that the investor wants to have. Uh, this term is there to make the investor comfortable that yes, he has some power in the startup and this makes him more comfortable to invest in your company, to be a part of your company. So, this is an essential clause. Just a second, my mouse is getting stuck. Yes. Uh, next is preemptive rights. So, preemptive rights is uh, very simple. Uh, preemptive right means whenever you are raising your second round of funding, the existing investors will have the right to, per to participate in that funding. That is it. So why is that? Because say for example, the investors right now invested and now you are raising a second round of funding. Okay, your company has done very good. Uh, if you are bringing in another investor, so usually this investor wants that he can also increase his stake because he sees that the company is getting successful it is fair also right if you have fixed the valuation and whoever gives you money based on that valuation it's fine for you if your existing investor is giving it that's perfectly okay and this gives comfort to the investor that in case the company becomes successful he will have more options to purchase more shares of the company so that will get him more involved in the company so this is a good point to have for the investor preemptive rights 2.3 is anti-dilution protection, a very important uh, uh, right of the, uh, a very important point for the investor. So, what anti-dilution means is that today, for example, you have raised investment at 5 crores, but tomorrow, if you are raising your investment at lower than 5 crores, that means that when you raise that investment, 
investor shares are equity is not going to get diluted. So usually when you raise shares, investor, everyone's equity who is part of the company gets diluted. But if the valuation of the company decreases means that you have actually declined the company from when the investor invested. So his shares will equity will not be diluted, which is again fair because you are executing. It's your responsibility that you have made the company fall down. So you should pay for it, right? Why should the investor pay for it? So anti-dilution protection is important for the investor to have. Promoters lock in. Another important point, promoters lock in means that the founders of the company cannot leave the company for at least three years. If they leave it, they will not get shares or they will not get the full amount of shares that they have, which is again very important for the investor because sometimes what happens is that the investor invests money, the uh, investor invests 50 lakhs in your company. You feel that the company is not going to work and then you just leave with the money. What can the investor do? Nothing, right? So he's preventing you from leaving for at least three years is usually the lock in is two, two years, three years. Important point. So see, the purpose of this term sheet is to have points that makes the investor comfortable and trust you guys, trust your startup that you are in here for the full time. You will not leave the company. You will make the company grow. That is important. So I hope you are understanding the crux of these points, right? So whenever if an, if an investor tomorrow tells you that he wants to have anti-dilution principle, he wants to have promoters lock in, don't get confused that what does it mean? Oh my God, I do not know it. Now I'm telling you, uh, keep these in your mind and you can very effectively negotiate with the investors. You can uh, even negotiate to not have a few of these points if you wish to, but act these points are fair enough. If you are a true founder, you won't have problems with these uh, uh, points, right? Similarly, so the investor had a, uh, 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 this promoter's lock-in was that founders cannot leave uh, for a bit, uh, less than three years, uh, before less than three years. Similarly, there is another uh, uh, point which is in favor of the founders, which is promoter's rights. Promoter's means founders, okay, founder's rights, which means that the investors cannot fire the f uh, founders for at least three years that is mentioned here. Again, very important because Tomorrow, say if your company is not doing good, your investor might get pissed or you might have a fight with your investor and they might fire you from your own company and then you will have nothing to do. You will have nowhere to go or your shares are useless because you have been fired before three years. So this is promoters right that the investor cannot fire you no matter what happens before three years. Vesting of promoters shares. So vesting uh, means I have already made a video on this. So usually vesting means that your shares are released in specific period. For example, as a founder, you have 80% equity in the company. So what happens if tomorrow you sell, uh, say the investor invested one crore, you grew the company and then tomorrow and then after three months, you sold all your equity to someone else and left the company with the money. The investor is now helpless because there's no one to run your company as a founder you have quit. So what vesting period means that you can only sell a percentage of your shares for particular years. For example, for the first year, I can only sell 10% sell of what I have. For the second year, I can only sell 20%. And from the third year onwards, I can sell the remaining. So this ensures that the founder does not leave the investor and does not leave the company. Right of first refusal. Now, right of first refusal is important. What is this? Is I, I get confused in this sometimes. Very simple. Again, so right of uh, first refusal is that tomorrow, as a founder, if you are planning to sell the shares of the company to another company, okay, uh, similar to uh, this is similar to preemptive right sort of thing, but uh, slightly different. So if you if tomorrow you want to sell your company shares to another company, so the investor has the has the right to first. Uh, you, the investor has the right to first be offered the sale of those shares at the same price that you are offering to the other company. So it's not your loss also. You want to sell the shares, the investor sells, tells it's okay. You fix the value at what you want to sell the shares, but first bring it to me. Only if I refuse it that I do not want to buy it for more money, then you take it to another third party. Okay, this gives investors a sort of not your loss. You wanted money by selling the shares. It's fine, right? You can get it from anywhere, no matter who gives it. So if the investor is giving it, let, let him give it. He has more comfort. So this point is exactly that. Okay. Uh, another very important right is tag along right. So tag along right is that whenever tomorrow as a founder, you are planning to sell your shares to another company uh, that uh, th uh, any other company. 
uh, then the investor will also have the right to sell equivalent shares pro rata shares to that company you understood this point slightly so see right of first refusal preemptive tag along these are these are almost similar but slightly different so this means that if tomorrow i am uh, just selling my 60% my 30% to uh, another company my 30% shares to another company and i might i might i might do it i'm i'm the founder i might do it right no one is stopping me but that is a loss for the company because the founder has less shares he'll be less involved in the company the investor will be at a loss right the, ex the one who was executing is less involved so what the investor tells is that if you are selling 30% of your shares in the company uh, then and equivalent shares i will also share to the same unless i am i am unless he is taking in my shares he cannot take just alone your shares for example if you are selling 30% of your total shares in the company then the investor will also such a, uh, sell 30 will actually have to sell me uh, not not have to i'm putting it in the wrong word so if a company has agreed to buy 30% of your total shares in the company then that a uh, company has to necessarily buy 30% of the of the investors shares also that is called tag along right which means that whenever you are tagging along with another, with another company the investor will tag along with you that's the name tag along rights i hope i have made that clear right i think the battery in my laptop is less 5% will it work i think it should let's proceed uh, next point is esop ESOP again very simple this just uh, shows that uh, uh, you can issue, issue ESOPs and you can actually specify here whether ESOPs will be diluted from the investors equity or how much ESOPs will you issue that can be here right. Next is affirmative voting rights. So this is actually not essential for you to know I am skipping this I do not want to confuse you all right uh, this is related to voting right that if a certain decision has to be taken in the company how uh, uh, important the decision of the investor is but because you have already held him as an investor director i think that's fair enough in affirmative voting rights what you can write is that for particular decisions only investors can govern whether this decision should be taken or not irrespective of the founder for example uh, in this po in this uh, uh, point there can be another sub point which tells that in affirmative voting rights that any decision in the company which has a cost of above 10 lakhs has to be first approved by the investor that can be there in that okay the next is information rights information right rights means what information will the what right does the investor have to take information periodically from the company for example i have written here that the investors sh uh, shall receive from the company financial statements and when should they receive it annual statements uh, the uh, bo board meetings uh, uh, print out those so they should receive all these things there are certain information that the investor needs from the company so that is agreed here that every every month i'll send the investor uh, unaudited balance sheets a uh, financial statement every quarter i'll send him uh, audited balance sheet so so that the investor is well informed of what is happening in the company because he's not he's not in the execution of the company so he won't know actually what has happened unless he's communicated to so he makes sure that at the right time he is getting the right communication and uh, the next point is exit mechanism how will the investor exit from the company i don't think i need to specify this this is not important this is a point which is uh, there almost uh, the, the, which, which, which is a common point and you do not need to actually uh, think about this because there are fixed exit mechanisms either EPO or sale or drag along option just I, I won't go into that. Uh, then this is not important free transferability is not important. I think I have covered everything the rest of the things are all legal and you do not you can just read it uh, when you download i will put a link to it you can just read it and you will get to know it uh, whatever it is pure english uh, my main confidentiality so this is one clause which is important so confidentiality confidentiality means that you and the investor both will remain con confidential you will not tell any other person or the news or the media that this investor is interested in your company and he is looking to invest similarly this investor will not tell that he is looking to invest in your company to any other person or to any other company okay 
Now, what does exclusivity, exclusivity means? Exclusivity means non-compete. It's the same thing. This means that if the investor invests in your company or he's looking to invest in your company, which means that he cannot go to any other company who is doing similar work, uh, which are deemed as your competition. He cannot go to them for a fixed period, say for the next six months or the next 60 days after engaging with your company. He cannot do that. This is that point. Okay. The rest of the points are again, I think we are done with the term sheet. Yes. So this is what guys the term sheets term sheet looks like a lot of uh, you were messaging me on my uh, keep messaging me on my different channels that uh, how do you what, what are the terms that you need to negotiate with the investor. So these are the terms right and you do not need to negotiate them you need to get it signed that is important. So this is the standard term sheet that you can use. I think you should use and I have focused on all the important points which were there. See all these points are self explanatory instruments valuation. You know what valuation is. You know what proposed transaction is. Uh, if you just read it once you can uh, understand it. I meant to explain you specifically uh, some points which are difficult to understand is preemptive rights, anti dilution protection the lock in for promoters, promoters right, vesting of promoter shares, right of first refusal, tag along right. So I think this page is the, the second page is very important. This is the most confusing also a lot of entrepreneurs do not know about these uh, rights and terms which has to be agreed between the investor and entrepreneur. So what I would suggest is whenever uh, you are trying to uh, do an uh, do an agreement or a, a term sheet sign in a, a term sheet with the investor. Make sure that both of you are comfortable. You should not push the investor also so much that he becomes uncomfortable that no sir, I am not willing to give you a promoter's lock in means that I can leave the company before three years also, which is wrong, which gives a negative impression to the investor that you are not fully dedicated to the company. You might leave it before uh, before three years means that you are not fully dedicated. You will take the money and you will leave. So that is a wrong impression to have. You should understand the investor's point, point of view also because the investor is someone who is a complete stranger. He does not know you. He does not know your nature. He does not know you as a person and still he is investing in your company which means that you have to give him comfortability and this is what this term sheet does. It gives him comfortability that uh, if tomorrow you cannot leave without uh, before three years the he can uh, you are giving him tag along right if tomorrow you are selling your shares then you will also make make sure that his shares are also being sold uh, at an equal at, at the same value. So these are all the rights which are important uh, for the entrepreneur to attract the investors to make sure that the investor is comfortable and same these acts as a cushion to the investor. Uh, to reduce the risks which are there in investing in a startup because ultimately if the startup fails the investors money is lost you are not liable liable to pay that money to the sorry to the investor that he has uh, invested in terms of equity so i hope uh, you guys have understood uh, this term sheet this is pretty confusing if you have not understood it in uh, this video i will I, i'll ask you that you first download it you have a read of it and then you watch the video again if you want to but I think I have explained it pretty well and I was personally I was damn confused about so let me tell you this is an interesting story uh, when I started uh, uh, my company and I was looking for investment I was hell confused I did not know about any of these things promoters lock in promoters right and all those things and I spent months sitting with my legal person. Uh, to frame these and I was negotiating with the investors on points which did not need negotiation. But I was under the impression that they are taking advantage of me by having all these points here. I did not know that these points are fair enough for both of them. Now when I am the investor I know that these points have to be there because you have to be fair to the investor. He is investing you investing in your company. So I have had uh, my uh, not so good experience with term sheets and agreements. Uh, but uh, I hope you won't face that because I have made this video specifically to make this uh, clear with you and uh, I think I have covered everything about term sheets uh, coming up a bit about the agreement. So now when the final legal agreement is signed so all these terms will be shifted to the legal agreement plus there will be additional things which governs to the legalities of the state or the country that has to be there uh, in terms of legally signing any document. So this is a very important document. Uh, I hope you understand the importance of it and uh, uh, yeah, I think I've covered everything and I will see you guys in the next video now. Thank you.